Hi everyone, um, welcome to Honeywell Pirate Ship. I'm going to be reading you the story of Christopher Nibble. So. If there was one thing Christopher Nibble loved more than football, it was eating dandelion leaves. He ate dandelion leaves at breakfast time, at lunch time, and at dinner time. And if Christopher felt peckish between meals, he ate more dandelion leaves. But it was not just Christopher who liked dandelion leaves. Mr. and Mrs. Nibble liked them too. His sister liked them. His friends liked them. In fact, every guinea pig in Dandeville loved dandelion from Dandeville it says munch munch nibble nibble munch. All day long the happy sound of munching and nibbling filled the air until, that is, dandelion leaves began to run out. Dandelion dishes were taken off the menus and dandelion drinks disappeared from shelves. And this says menu today, carrot and lettuce wrap on a bed of <gasps> Dandelion's been crossed out and it says cabbage leaves. Dandelion soup now has become cabbage soup and dandelion and broccoli quiche has become cabbage and broccoli quiche. So all the dandelion dishes were taken from the shelves and the dandelion juice is sold out. The last few leaves could be bought on the internet for a huge amount of money. And this says bid now for organic juicy dandelion leaf. Soon the worst thing imaginable happened. All over the town dandelions had been munched and nothing more than bitten down stalks and the guinea pigs had to make do with chewy cabbage instead. Just one dandelion was left but nobody knew about it except Christopher Nibble. It happened to be growing right outside his bedroom window. Christopher's mouth, mouth watered at the sight of it, but he knew he mustn't eat it or let anyone else eat it. Not if it was the last dandelion in town. It might even be the last dandelion in the whole world. He thought hard and decided to go to the library. And you can see He's got a book out and it says dandelions on it. He borrowed the book called Everything You Need to Know About Dandelions and he read it very carefully. He found a little cloche to protect the dandelion and every day he watered it and picked off the bugs. Every day he was very good about, taking, about not taking even the tiniest little bite while he waited and waited and waited <gasps> until finally his dandelion had grown the most beautiful white head of tiny seeds. Very gently Christopher picked it and carried it all the way up Daisy Chain Hill. When he reached the top he had just enough puff to take a deep breath The seeds filled the air and landed gently over Dandeville. At first, nobody noticed, but soon the new plants started to sprout fresh leaves. And in no time at all, Dandeville was filled with the happy sound of munching once more. As for Christopher, he still loves playing football. Nibble, munch, nibble. But now, there's something he loves just as much as dandelions. Christopher loves growing them. And you can see he's got a very smart watering can and he's watering his dandelions. And that is the end of the story. Now, I know that in nursery, they've just got two new guinea pigs. One's called Ginger and one is called Punkerella. So I thought that maybe the nursery children or anyone at Honeywell really, think about how you could look after guinea pigs. So you need to make sure that you give them water, give them food, give them lots of love, 
um, let them have a bit of outside time if you can. So I thought maybe you could write a list of things to do to look after guinea pigs. And then also, this book is also about planting things, okay? So if you have got a garden or a windowsill, maybe I could set you a little challenge to plant some seeds and then make sure that they're in a nice sunny place so that they can grow and make sure that you water them. And then maybe you could send me or one of your teachers a picture of something that you've grown over this time. So I hope that you've enjoyed the story and I'm sending lots of love to all of the Honeywell children.